to give a one word answer? Yes. I think Synology is honestly the best NAS out there for most users. Most users and most businesses easily recommend Synology. It gets more complicated than that though. All right, and so now with that out of the way, let's actually go into this. This is actually from a question that a client asked me two days ago. He asked me, does Synology make the best NAS out there? I told him they make the best NAS software out there. They do not make the best NAS hardware out there. That is my opinion. So that is the basis for everything. And so when you're looking at what NAS you should buy, you kind of have to factor everything in. But if you want the quick TLDR, going Synology will never be a mistake. You're never going to regret it. You're not going to be like, oh, just I wish I had gone somewhere else. It's always a good choice. There are some better choices in some circumstances, but it is always a good choice. All right. And so now before I can talk about a video like this, I have to give my biases and my background because otherwise none of this counts. So Synology does not hire me. Synology has never paid me any money, though they have given me a license for free and they have let me test out products to return. Synology has absolutely zero clue that I'm making this video. This is not affiliated with Synology directly or anything like that. This is all my own opinions. I started this YouTube channel two, three years ago now, making Synology tutorials because I got a Synology. I was like, huh, I want to start teaching people how to do this and honestly get better at public speaking and explaining things. And so I started this YouTube channel. I then started getting a ton of people calling me and say, hey, you clearly know what you're doing. Can we just hire you to do this? And so now I have a consulting business off of this that I'm actually going to make into my full-time job. So I am very much wrapped up with Synology. So I do have some bias here because I make a good amount of money and it will be my full-time job consulting on primarily Synology systems. I do stand up other systems for people, other NAS systems like TrueNAS, but the primary thing that I do consulting with are Synology NASs. I have tested out a lot of NAS operating systems. I've tested out QNAP, I've tested out Azus Store, I've tested out TrueNAS and FreeNAS, daily drive those. And I've also tested out Open Media Vault as well as some other ones. And I do a lot with Synology clearly. So I do have some biases here because I am so involved with it, but I do still think a decision to use a Synology NAS is never a bad one. But I just wanted to clear that out of the way and get understanding there. I do have some biases, but it's not like I'm being paid to make this video or anything like that. These are all my own opinions. So I think Synology honestly makes a really good product. I really like, especially their entry level NASAs, their plus series. Those are great workhorses that have just a phenomenal operating system behind them. You definitely can buy a more powerful NAS that's got a more powerful CPU from another provider for cheaper. But the Synology operating system, Synology DSM, is head and shoulders above any other NAS operating system out there for people who are not just looking for a file server. If you are just looking for a file server, that's where it gets a little bit more complicated, but we're going to talk about that later on. So now for people who want a NAS and they want to be able to back up their photos to it, they want to be able to share files from it, they want to be able to store everything on there, they want to play videos off it, they want everything just wrapped up into this one nice neat bow. Synology makes a phenomenal product because of Synology DSM. Synology DSM is so user-friendly. I know some people, I have clients who are like, this is not very user-friendly. I'm like, you should see the competition. It is so user-friendly and makes a lot of sense. And they've got such powerful tools out of the gate. So for most small businesses or home users, it is an absolute no brainer in my opinion to go with Synology. If you do not need crazy fast speed, I'm talking like NVMe level speed, and that's all you're focused on. The Synology features are just so phenomenal that really make up for that poor hardware in software and user friendliness and capabilities. The backup solutions they provide, active backup for business, hyper backup, all of these things set it head and shoulders above other units, in my opinion. All right, and so now for people who just came here to say, hey, I'm about to buy Synology, is that a good choice? My opinion, almost certainly, yes. So now let's actually go through and start breaking down the different options you've got when you're really looking at a NAS. 
And I'm going to really start off and just kind of choose the three most common options I see and that you'd probably go with. There is either TrueNAS, Synology, or QNAP. Those three, I think, are probably the three that you're competing for if you're really looking at different things. For TrueNAS, you've got two different options. You can either have them build you the hardware or you can build it yourself and just install it. So if you've got an old machine and you want to install something on it and you want to make it into a NAS, TrueNAS, great option. Now, it is running ZFS, so you, it's not just like, ah, oh, throw something together. If it fails, it fails. No, it, it actually requires a fair amount of love and care to get running. So if you are just looking for, I literally just need a hard drive accessible on the rest of my network and I don't really care if it fails, check out Open Media Vault. But that's going to be the last time I talk about them. So we've got TrueNAS, Synology, and QNAP. TrueNAS is the only one that you're able to completely run open source without buying their own hardware. Technically, since both QNAP and Synology are available on Linux, you are actually able to install it on any Linux box yourself because the software has to be open source. But if you're doing that, just go TrueNAS because it's going to be a lot more complicated and you're going to run into issues. All right, and so now we're going to start by looking at the segment who are looking at like a four bay unit who just needs something that's a file server and that's, that's primarily the main focus. I will say, I think more likely than not, Synology has this absolutely in the bag. Synology's user interface is so easy. At this level, unless you're trying to run a bunch of virtual machines on it, you're not really gonna notice a difference in performance in between the different options unless you're building one yourself. But for a four bay pre-build, I think Synology has this in the bag, absolutely. Because you can either buy a 420 plus or a 920 plus, and it is going to be a great NAS for you. And it's gonna be capable of more, more likely than not everything you need it to do without running into too many issues. All right, and so now let's bump up and say we're, we're not at somewhere who just needs some hard drives. No, this is somebody who really wants 10 and maybe even 25 gigabit networking. And you know, they, they only have maybe eight bays, they have eight SSDs. This is where it's going to get interesting and it's going to heavily depend on where your priorities are and how tech savvy you are. So QNAP, I think, really comes into play here, specifically in that eight bay, stupid high performance level. Because QNAP has these units that have built-in 10 gig adapters. So you can literally just plug in a Thunderbolt port directly into the QNAP and it's got a built-in 10 gig converter. Stuff like that, super, super, super useful. And I think that does set up the QNAP hardware apart. They also are going to have more powerful CPUs and a ton of other stuff in there. And so for a pre-build, QNAPs are going to be a little bit more expensive than the Synologies at these price points, but you really should look at them if you're only going to be caring about performance. That's all this NAS is to you, it's performance. It is a video editing rig. It is everything to you, it is just performance. The thing is, as soon as you wanna do anything outside of that, I think QNAP kind of falls apart. The QNAP operating system is not where Synology's at, and their security is flawed. QNAP has been riddled with bugs and crypto viruses and tons of stuff. Even people following best practices set forth by QNAP, getting their entire file systems encrypted and just so many issues. They have default passwords that were hard coded into every single NAS for a long time. They have had a lot of issues like that. And so because of that, I tend to shy away from somebody recommending QNAP unless they literally just need the highest performance possible and don't want to build anything themselves and that's all this is to them. So that is where QNAP I think kind of shines in that specific realm is where you just need a fast file server and that's it and you don't want to build it yourself. Now let's look at the option where you're somebody who is capable of building it themselves and you really, your, your primary focus is on speed and not really caring about any ancillary features or you're really tech savvy and you're totally spin, fine spinning up your own instances of like Nextcloud and things like that if you need remote access. I think for the tech savvy guy who's totally fine building their own file system and needing a ton of performance, I think TrueNAS might have it there. Once again, where you are just super, super, super focused on the highest possible performance out of the unit and you just, you wanna build it yourself, 
TrueNAS is going to be a great option here. Personally, my video editing file server runs TrueNAS scale and it is screaming fast. Right now it has 16 SSDs running it and it is insanely fast and I can build it myself. For businesses who need to deploy massive file servers and once again are just focused on it being as fast as possible and have an entire IT department who can handle backups and everything, TrueNAS is something I deploy quite often actually, just because it is really fast and still pretty easy to manage. Another great use case for TrueNAS is you need back storage for a bunch of virtual machines. You've got like 15 VM hosts that you wanna run hundreds of virtual machines on. TrueNAS is going to be great because TrueNAS runs ZFS. And ZFS, you can cram that thing full of RAM and it is going to be screaming fast for all these virtual machines. And so that is another place that TrueNAS really shines. But once again, you'll see that I am listing out very specific users. And that is where these two other operating systems tend to shine. Here, Synology can do all of this and it will do all of it very well. It's just, if you're only focused on specific performance and you already are pretty tech savvy and are going to build it themselves, that is where TrueNAS is gonna be better at this. And so it's really an option of good and better versus good and bad. And so that's why, even though I can build a far more powerful file server for a lot of clients, it's a lot easier to ship them a Synology because you just don't have to worry about it. It just kind of works. You don't run into driver issues. You don't run into any issues like that. It's pre-built and it just works very well. Backing it up, insanely easy. And it's got so many extra onesie twosie features that they're like, oh, we can also do this. Because of that, I still recommend most people get a Synology. But that's why for me, I run TrueNAS there. The one place I will say that Synology is not the right option. This is just, don't go there yet, maybe one day, but not today, is going over 200 terabytes in a single file system. Where that is, Synology just cannot handle that today. Synology does have BTRFS Petascale, but I've had only one client who's really deployed it and it was slow. It wasn't slow, slow, but it wasn't fast. That is where ZFS absolutely shines. ZFS doesn't blink when you go up to a petabyte. It doesn't care. ZFS is designed to be a massive file system and that is ZFS's bread and butter. And so if you're looking at those massive, massive, over 200 terabyte file systems, you're probably going to want to go TrueNAS, honestly TrueNAS. If you're going that large, build it yourself and that way you can save a ton of money and handle everything yourself. Now, TrueNAS also does sell massive systems, but those are price walled. And essentially you have to request a quote to get all these prices. And I'll be honest with you, anytime you have to request a quote to get a price, it's gonna be more than most people watching this are going to be willing to pay. Now, they build a great product and it guarantees it's got enterprise support, but if you're just looking at setting up yourself, you're going to save a lot of money doing it yourself, more likely than not. So that's kind of it. For people who have these edge use cases, Synology is not the right option sometimes. It's not the wrong option unless you're trying to go over 200 terabytes, but it's not the perfect option. There are other options out there, but in my experience, deploying a Synology NAS is never really the wrong decision to make, except for that one caveat I mentioned. And especially in the smaller units, talking under eight bays, you just can't cost effectively build your own NAS there. Linus Tech Tips tries every once in a while and they, it's just a nightmare building it all together just to barely get underneath the price. It's one of those things where you think it's kind of expensive for what it is, but there's not really a good way to build it any other way. And so that is just one of those things where if you're looking at a small form factor build like this, no brainer, Synology. They are incredibly quiet and incredibly efficient and so easy to manage. All right, well, I hope this really helped kind of shore up where to deploy what file systems. And honestly, when you're making this decision, it's important to look at. One other thing to look at in the enterprise is now Synology is starting to require use of their own hard drives for NASes that have more than eight hard drives in them, specifically in the head unit. 
For large scale file systems, I don't think this is going to be a huge deal. As for people who are just trying to ink by as cheap as possible, you don't actually have to use their hard drives. Now it'll just give you a warning essentially, and you won't get support. But for full on enterprises, it is required, but I still tend to recommend them honestly, just because at that level, if you looked at requesting quote from like IX systems, it's gonna be more expensive. And so it's still like in the ballpark and it's still fairly common practice. Plus just the ability to super easily fail over between file systems and set up clustering between two different Synologies is so great. All right, and so that's my closing thoughts on is Synology good NAS or not? I think that the hardware is not as good as the rest of the units. It's not saying they're gonna fail or anything, it's just not as powerful, but the software easily makes up for that in leaps and bounds, in my opinion. Go and leave any of the questions you've got for me in the comments below and have a good one. Bye.